All right, it is Tuesday. Just got in from work. Um, we just went out and collected some firework, uh, firewood, out of the pile. <laughs> you can tell. I had some coffee, too. Isn't this a shame? I should be a little sharper. Anyway, <clears throat> I had a... I was getting out of my work clothes, getting ready to get cleaned up, and um, she shot a little bit of video real quick so I could see what my legs are looking like, because I'm putting on a quick uh, burst of size here, and what it is, is actually, the only thing I've really changed is um, I loosened up on the carbs a little bit, and I started to eat more rice, believe it or not, and uh, I'm not the only person that thinks this, Thad agrees with me completely, and he runs 280-ish in the 280s when he's big, you know. I mean, now he's like 5% body fat, so he's not in the 280s. But uh, we're hoping he's going to be competing probably around March at around 250-ish. Anyway, um, both of us feel the same that uh, white rice, white rice, man, it just seems to be the best for just getting swole. I mean, white rice is, what I do is I'll eat, uh, I'll eat it three or four times throughout the day. You know, I'll make up a bunch of it, like a rice cooker is one of the easiest things to do. We have a rice cooker in there now, and we keep that rice cooker full of rice. You know, you put it in there the night before, and, um, you know, fill it up, and it'll make all that rice. And then in the morning, when you get ready to go to work, it's already still warm. So it's not like you're taking rice out of the refrigerator where it gets really hard and, and crappy. And heat it back up, and it's, it's just not as good at all. So it's, it still tastes fresh to me. And, um, you know, you can throw it in a bowl, and you can shred you some chicken off of a rotisserie chicken, or we bake chickens or whatever. You pull some chicken off of there and um, throw that in there with it and mix it all up. Yeah, it's good that way. You can do whatever you want. You can put tuna fish in there with it. If you're eating beef, you can put pieces of beef in there with it. If you're eating beef, I'm not eating red meat anymore. I haven't for months and months. Um, but white rice. And then throughout the day, I'll eat that like probably, I don't know, three times, four times, you know, smaller amounts, um, smaller feedings spread through the day. Anyway, that's all I did, just turn the carbs up. The protein's been the same. I haven't changed the protein intake. I just turned the carbs up. And it's just had a dramatic effect. I just blown, blown right up, which I didn't expect it to have that dramatic effect because with everything that I do with the uh, carbolin and shit like that anyway, pre-workout, I stay pretty full of glycogen, you know. But yeah, I turn the carbs up and boom, just start to explode. I mean, my back is getting huge. I'm actually, also my shoulder's healing enough now that I can start to press some weight again. I can lay down and press some weight for the first time in a long time. So I've only been doing that now for about a month, maybe a little bit longer. And already it's making, it's having a huge impact. It's, you know, bringing back some density. I used to be a lot thicker, you know, and uh, you, you just can't get that depth with, uh, I don't, I can't anyway, without being able to have a shoulder that's going to push some heavy ass weight. So that's what the heavy weight's for, you know, the density. It's not going to, it's not going to uh, give you all the pop and the, I don't believe the separation and all that shit. It's not going to do all that. But it'll give you that density, you know. And if I hadn't had this injury, that, that business has been taken care of long ago. I would have I would have already, you know, I wouldn't be worried about that right now because you're really not going to lose it. It's easier, you know, to stimulate it with through other means, like the way that I typically train. You see me train because of the shoulder injury. Well, that's better for separation anyway, and it, and it really gives me more delineation and stuff. But um, it does actually does... Um, accent more detail, you know, it, it, it brings out more minute features in the muscle. So are you really changing the shape of a muscle? No, but you can exploit features uh, of the muscle that you otherwise maybe are not properly stimulating to be able to exploit. You understand what I'm saying? So just because you're looking at something and you think, um, you know, you, you, it looks a certain way, that doesn't mean it's completely and entirely developed in every aspect of it. So there can still be features of that muscle and aspects of that muscle and facets that you haven't even touched on yet. You know, that's going to take some other some other doing. And I know that um, there's there's guys now that'll say shit like, 
oh, you, you know, angles, that doesn't do any good and all this. You know, you can't work a muscle from various angles. It doesn't even make any difference. But see, the people that are telling you this, what do their physiques look like? Right. Now, according to Jay Cutler, and if you're not watching Jay Cutler's channel now, uh, Jay Cutler TV or whatever, on YouTube, you should be. I watch it religiously. It's uh, the best workout stuff that's on YouTube. It's the best. Better than my stuff, it's the best. And it's just, it's, it's a, a rush for me because every time he explains everything he's doing, it's exactly the same shit that I do. You know, so again and again, it's repeated. The guys with similar physiques, similar development, we pretty much have come to the same conclusion about a lot of tactics and approaches. So for a guy that doesn't have any of that, none of that, you know, musculature, that development, and if it's not his bag, that's good because I don't think he could do it anyway. So because he just, he, he has a closed mind. But if it's not his bag, that's fine. You don't want to look like that. That's fine. Cool. Okay. Different strokes for different folks. I don't want to look like you. I, I want to look like this. But uh, if he doesn't look like that, then he doesn't know what it takes to look like that. He doesn't know. He's never been there. How the hell does he know? It's kind of akin to, you know, you have three different kind of people, let's just say. A little analogy here. You know, I like analogies. You have one guy, he's a master carpenter. All right, he can build beautiful things. He works with wood and makes gorgeous, ornate, you know, stuff and just looks, you can't even find fault with it. It's just outrageous. It's, it's, it's as good as anybody's, but has his own style, okay? Just like physiques. When you see all these guys on stage, you know, they all have awesome physiques. They're all world-class physiques, and they're all a little bit different. Well, so you got that guy. He's the guy who actually can do it. And then you got a guy, uh, guy number two. He doesn't do it at all. He doesn't work with it with wood. He doesn't build anything. All he does is uh, he reads about it. He reads all about it. He's read all the books on woodworking, and he watches all the TV shows on the DIY channel and stuff about, you know, how to do all the carpentry stuff and repairs and all this shit and work with this, this wooden tools and all this crap, but he, he hasn't really done it at all, ever. He doesn't do it. He just considers himself um, an expert through what he's read. Does that even make sense, first off? Does that even make sense? No, it doesn't. But that's, you know, stick with me here. Okay, so you have both of those guys. Then you have a third guy comes along, and he's a guy that wants to, to be like guy number one. He wants some of what he has. He wants those skills. He wants to be able to work with that wood like that. He wants to create things like that and build things like that. You know, maybe he wants to have his own little flair, but he wants to do something along those lines. That's where he wants to be. Maybe not that good. Maybe he can't envision he's going to be that far, but he wants to go in that direction. Now, if he's an intelligent guy, even, even just reasonably intelligent, has a little common sense, who do you think he's going to go to for advice or tutelage? Do you think he's going to go to guy number one, the master carpenter? Or do you think he's going to go to guy number two, the guy that can, can't even you know, build a birdhouse straight, but he's read everything there is to read on the topic? You know, and he can point out everything guy number one's doing wrong. Does it make sense? Makes no sense. Of course, he's going to go to guy number one, right? But yet, when you start talking about something like this, okay, I, I'm, my strong suit is muscle. All right, building muscle. So when I talk about building muscle, all the aspects of it, it's plenty to keep me busy and keep me talking. There's many, many aspects to it. There's a lot to talk about. You know, and we talk about a lot of other things, too, that are actually more important. But for the sake of this, we're talking about building muscle. Now, if you're not down with that and you're not interested in that, that's fine. You don't have to be. It doesn't make you wrong or make me wrong. You understand? Different strokes. But um, why would you have a, go to a guy or look at a guy that doesn't have any muscle like that, has never had it, and take his advice, and he's going to point out something that me or Jay Cutler or anybody with tons of muscles, anybody walking around with 22-plus-inch arms, Right? You know, any of these big dudes, 30 plus inch quads, he's going to tell he's going to tell you what we're doing wrong. Right? Why it's not the best most effective and optimum method. Why it's not the best scenario. Yeah, why it's not the best scenario. <laughs> I mean, isn't it ridiculous? Anyway. So long story short, I'm going to attach a little clip here 
You see me in my skibbies. I don't care. They're nothing fancy. It's it's for the work day. You understand? All right, it is what it is. And yeah, I need to shave the hair off. You'll be able to see more cuts and all, but that's not the point. The point is, I'm just you know looking at what's there. I'm not going to go shaving my motherfucking legs and shaving all the hair off and doing all that crazy bullshit. That's too much manscaping for me, baby. Way too much manscaping for me. In fact, I would put myself under suspicion if, if I had such an interest to, to, to focus that much on that because I got too much hair to cut off like that, okay? Now, if I were ever going to compete again, then I got to do what I got to do. One in Rome, right? Then I got to cut it off or shave it off or whatever. So, yeah, you can't really see all the, you know, the lines that are there and there's not that many lines there yet because I'm, I'm just getting a little bit hard. I need to get a lot harder. But it is what it is, and I'll just put it on here anyway. And I'll be back in a little bit with uh, some talk about uh, nutrition. Turn around. Harley. Move it, Harley. Look at my legs. Look at my legs. Move it out of there. Get away. <laughs> So my hammy, get my hammy on there so I can see what it looks like. Okay. Does it look big? Yeah, look at the other side. Harley, your head's in the way. Okay. Oh wow, you that one again. That one? Yeah. Alright, so your ham on that side. A little different, but I think it's still big. That's not as big? I can't, it doesn't have that line. As uh, long, down here? Yeah, as long as the other one. Yeah. Okay. 